Cool Interactions, episode four, coming at you. This is the time-space convergence. We're moving on from measuring global interactions into changing space, the shrinking world. The sh world is shrinking, what does that mean? Okay, we're gonna figure that out. So we're gonna talk about the reduction in friction of distance and time-space convergence. All these things might sound crazy, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know what I'm saying. All right, friction of distance. What is friction of distance? Essentially, that's distance decay, which I'm sure you've probably heard about if you're studying IV geography. The closer you are to something, the more likely you are to interact with that thing. The further you are from something, the less likely you are to interact with that thing. So for example, the, the classic example that I use in class is my students. I used to work in Manila, and I would say, how many of you are would would say you're from Asia and 90% of the class would raise their hand because we were in Asia so those students that uh, raising that are raising their hand they're they're close to home they don't have to move far away to go to school I come to Europe and I work at the Inter International School of Luxembourg and what do you know 90% of my students are European so um, that that essentially is distance decay. The, the further you are or the closer you are to something, the more you are, the less likely you are to be interacting with it. All right, how does that relate to globalization? Well, what's happened is as a result of two major things, if you look at the time-space convergence definition down here, changes in transport and changes in communication have brought us closer together, closer together because we can now communicate and get to places much easier and the world is shrinking, we say, as a result of that. The time that it takes to get to a place has shrunk, which has caused places to feel closer together. And essentially I have friction of distance here. Uh, if you are wanting to know more about it, it's just a simple Wikipedia page. And I've got something interesting uh, to go along with time-space convergence. Back in the day, this is from 1881, a map showing if Europe was the center of the universe, how long it would take to get from Europe to other locations around the planet. And you'll notice that it would take 10 to 20 days just to get to the United States. And now you can get to the United States in about six hours flight, depending on where you leave from, but probably about six to seven hours. And depending on what type of transport you take, if you take a Concorde, I believe one of the fastest flights uh, recorded across the Atlantic is a matter of hours. So um, that is friction of distance and time-space convergence because we have better communication and better transport. All right, if you search time-space convergence, what you'll end up with is, in an image search, images like this, which show how, as a result of changing technology, the world has shrunk. Shrunk, I put it in quotes because the world is not physically shrinking, we know that. All right. Um, on top of that, if you want more information about these topics, the last link in my notes here, which will be in the description below, is the, a link to, I think, one of the best resources on the internet as far as the geography of transport systems goes because this is a curated source by uh, professors that have studied transport systems and are collectively putting these resources together. This section right here is specifically on the time-space convergence and friction of distance and how it's changed over time in the last 200 years as a result of communication and technology, okay? So I hope all that is informative and I'll be back in episode five.